Chapter 15 Elizabeth Elizabeth couldn't wait to check out the space upstairs. Yes, it was out of the way, but it would be more private that way, and surely he would be okay if she put out signs. Can I see the space upstairs? Help you start moving things? Elizabeth asked as Carl left the store. Well, Mr. Brown glanced upstairs and then surveyed the area for a minute, as if he wasn't sure where he had planned to put the stuff from upstairs, causing Elizabeth to wonder if he really had been wanting to expand, or if Emma had convinced him. Sure, I think we can move the fabric and sewing materials up with you, which will give me a little extra room down here. It's quite a mess up there, though. I don't mind, Elizabeth said. Hard work that reaped benefits never seemed like work at all. And I can help for a bit, Emma added. Pa has the clinic until two. Let's see what we can do then, Mr. Brown said, leading the way up the stairs. They were narrow and a little rickety, but they managed to hold their weight. The upstairs was also where Mr. Brown lived, so the available area wasn't very big, and it was filled with boxes. I guess we'll take these boxes downstairs and I'll go through them later. Then we can see about moving the fabric up here. Elizabeth had no idea if this area would be large enough to hold the fabric, let alone her dress designs and herself, but it was worth a shot, and she could always move into another area if she grew. Let's get going then. Bending down, she grabbed one of the boxes, trying to balance it in her arms as she made her way back to the stairs. Emma and Mr. Brown followed suit, and before long they had created quite the stack in the corner of his store. I've got to head back to the clinic, Emma said, as they dropped the last box, but I'll come get you when we close. Thank you for everything. Elizabeth didn't know what Emma had said to Mr. Brown, but she was almost sure that the man wouldn't have agreed without Emma's convincing. Of course! Emma smiled and waved goodbye, and Elizabeth turned to Mr. Brown. Do you have a broom? I'd like to sweep up there before we start bringing the fabric up. The man nodded and then glanced around the store. I'll get you a broom, but I'm afraid you're on your own after this. I have a store to run after all. Of course. I'm happy to do the rest and stay out of your hair. Broom in hand, she climbed the stairs once again and then swept up the small space. When she was finished, she leaned back and surveyed the area. It was small, but perhaps the fabric could go against the wall to the left. That would leave enough room for a small table for her to cut fabric on and two chairs. It left no room to hang designs, but Mr. Brown had said she could put them in the front window. And it was hers. She needed to remember that. She made her way back down the stairs, returned the broom, and then began grabbing the fabric. As she did, she heard muted voices coming from the front of the store. She looked up, trying to see if it was Emma who had returned, though it felt entirely too early. However, the woman talking to Mr. Brown was not Emma. It was a woman she didn't recognize, and though she didn't want to eavesdrop, she couldn't help overhearing a few words. Her name is Elizabeth Baxter. She married Carl. And you're giving her space in your store? Disdain dripped from the woman's voice. Mrs. Cook said that women would be interested in her dress designs, so we'll see how it goes. The woman laughed. She must not know. Not know? Not know what? And was the she referring to herself or to Emma? Who was this woman? At that moment, one of the bolts of fabric fell from her arms and into a small display, knocking it over. The commotion halted the conversation happening up front, and when Elizabeth glanced up again, the woman was gone. She wondered who she was and what exactly she'd been talking about. Before Mr. Brown could say anything to her, Elizabeth cleaned up the mess and headed upstairs with the bolts of fabric. It took her a few more trips, but finally she had everything she needed upstairs to begin setting up the display. When it was finished, she stepped back, 
wiping a small sheen of sweat from her brow. It wasn't perfect, but she thought it looked decent, and once she got a table and chairs in, it would be even better. The sound of footsteps on the creaky stairs caused her to turn, and she smiled when she saw Emma's face come into view. Elizabeth, this looks amazing, Emma said as she crested the stairs. Thank you. It still needs a little work, but I think it will get there. I agree, and I can't wait until you fill it with women ordering from you. I have a feeling you will make a name for yourself. Emma's words caused Elizabeth's smile to falter. She didn't want to make a name for herself. Well, she did, but she didn't, because that would make it easier for Jacob to find her. Oh, I don't need all that. She waved her hand dismissively. Just making the local women happy will be enough for me. I have no doubt you will do that. I'm finished at the clinic, so are you ready to head back? Elizabeth nodded and the women descended the stairs once more. Shall I come in tomorrow, Mr. Brown? The older man shrugged. I don't know if you'll have any clients by tomorrow, but you're welcome to. I'll try to remember to hang the dress you left in the window and we'll see what it does. Thank you. Of course, leaving one of her dresses here meant she'd have to make another for herself, but it would give her something to do until she had customers. Oh, and Mr. Brown, who was that woman that was here earlier? I don't believe I've met her yet, and I wanted to see if she might be interested in a dress or lessons. Elizabeth tried to play the question off nonchalantly, but she was dying of curiosity. Even more than the woman's name, she wanted to know what the woman thought she ought to know, but she couldn't very well ask Mr. Brown that. Mr. Brown lifted an eyebrow, as if trying to decide if that was really the motivation for her question. But he answered, That was Miss Johnson. I'm sure Mrs. Cook can tell you more about her than I can. Elizabeth glanced over at Emma, who shifted uncomfortably. She would ask her friend about the woman, but not here. Thank you. I'll see you tomorrow. She waved to Mr. Brown and then stepped out of the entrance, nearly colliding with the man who stood by the doorway. Oh, I'm so sorry. You can't keep Prospect in the same cave over and over again, the man said, hardly looking at her. You need to find someplace new. I'm sorry, Elizabeth asked. Emma took her arm and led her away from the man who had now begun to smack his forehead with the palm of his hand. Don't mind him, Emma whispered softly. That's Christian Turner. He fought in the Civil War, and it messed him up a little. He's always talking to himself about prospecting for gold. Oh. Elizabeth looked back at the man as they stepped away from the store. Is there even gold around here? Emma chuckled. If there is, no one has found any yet. That's so sad. Has he been like this long? As long as he's been here, Emma said. He's a kind man when he's in his right mind, but recently that seems to be fewer and fewer times. He was gone for a couple of months, prospecting, I guess, and when he came back, his spells were much worse. Can anything be done for him? Emma sighed and shook her head. Not that we know of. My father looked him over but can't find a reason for the spells. Elizabeth's heart broke for the man who seemed so lonely. She knew what it was like to be alone, and she wouldn't wish that on anyone. That's such a shame. What about Miss Johnson? Can you tell me about her? Emma stiffened slightly and chewed on her lip. Miss Johnson is... Rebecca, the woman we told you about. Her best friend was Pauline. She's a good woman, but, like the rest of us, she is only human, and therefore has flaws. Kindness is something she struggles with. Elizabeth climbed into the wagon. Oh, that's right. Had Rebecca been referencing Pauline when she asked Mr. Brown if Elizabeth knew? That didn't make sense, though, because why would Elizabeth, a newcomer to town, be upset about a marriage that happened before she arrived? And how would Rebecca even know that Elizabeth knew Kate? She must have heard wrong. That was the only thing that made sense.